Hey, Chuck here with Apple Drains. I'm actually on my way to North Carolina to the Charlotte office to help Kevin out there. He's really busy, so I'm going to run up here for a few days and just give him an extra hand. I wanted to show you a feature video. This is an ultimate crawl space waterproofing problem, and hopefully you can see you know, what it really takes to get into a space that's very confined, uh, work in an area that is full of water, full of dirt, full of mud, and still be able to solve the problem. This woman had estimates in the range of thirty to fifty thousand dollars and as she showed me these things and you know I could really feel for her. And the sad part was that all of these people claim to be experts and they're all selling on fear. And that's just not the way to go about selling a job and you know trying to get that customer to just be so scared that they're going to jump on you and, and you know, take that job. But my advice to anybody is that you need to trust that person. If you trust that person, I think that you're going to get a good contractor and you're going to feel comfortable about spending the money that's needed to repair something. You're going to have somebody come down and work on the foundation of your property, your home. They better be trustworthy, that's for sure. But anyways, here's a video. This is short clips, a preview of what's coming up. Um, this is just me. I'm over here all by myself. I always like to lead by example. So I needed to get over there and do a few things so that the crew could actually get in there and work. Uh, number one was to get a sump pump down there and I did a few other things. But I think you'll enjoy the video. You'll learn something. And also you'll uh, enjoy very much the humor that comes along with working in a tight space. Hey, good morning. Chuck here with Apple Drains. Today we are in Lakeland, Florida, and we're going to be waterproofing a crawl space um, underneath this house. This is a special uh, project, very difficult one, probably one of the most difficult ones that I've attempted to do. Uh, let me show you why. And to give you some idea of crawling through a tight crawl space, just bear with me and you can enjoy crawling on your belly <laughs> to get back out. That part was easy, but look what we got to go through as we get over here. I'm just using my elbows to pull me along, but you can kind of see I'm going under a duct. Here's that main beam, and whoever put this up here, they put it on blocks, but there's no footer. And it does not attach to, you can see it doesn't attach to the main foundation. And I'm sure that that floor is going to warp in 20 years or less. Um, it's too bad, because that's major, major work to jack all that up and pour footers in this crawl space. So, yeah, we gotta go through that maze <laughs> and then turn left and we're almost there. But yeah, some things that I've noticed down here, you can see all the electrical wires just laying everywhere and water lines hanging here, hanging there. But the most interesting thing is, can you see this two inch pipe? All right, that's some type of plumbing, and it runs down hill. It goes across, and it turns, and it runs back uphill, <laughs> and it ties into, you can, you can see the rise, another two-inch line which ties into the main line. I mean, you know it's full of water, whatever it is, but it just amazes me what people do. Um, and the sad thing is, or maybe it's the funny thing, is they believe what they tell you. It's kind of like the French drain that lasts forever. I mean, these people really believe what they say. Anyways, let's keep on crawling. Sorry for the jittery, jumpy video. Uh, going through that maze of leftover galvanized pipe. 
that is so you can't even move it you'd have to cut it to get it out of here <laughs> and we'd be happy to do that at another time but yeah you can see where we're at still got the main sewer line to go underneath and if you look you see that box that's the zoller pump box that's how tight that fit is and grab my saw <laughs> My foot's stuck behind me. <laughs> Got to go over these 220 volt wires that are just laying everywhere here. I don't know if they're connected or not, but got to be careful. And we're almost to the exit. Throw that saw over there. We're almost there. What a fun job, right? something the DIY guy can do easily <laughs> but you know I know this is a long portion of the video and you can see how long it took me to get just out of the area where we plug the pump in coming underneath of this sewer line this is the tightest spot and of course it's right at the beginning of the crawl space makes it real hard to get your materials in and out if you're going to do some work down here so you can see i completed the footer trench um, this is not down below the footer it's just right alongside the footer and it goes all the way back about 40 feet back to where you saw me put the sump basin in and what we'll do when we bring the crew back is we're going to lay just a small base of gravel down at the bottom of the trench and then we'll put perforated pipe and then we'll cover all of that with gravel all the way up to over across the top of that footer. And remember how the system works. This is a true example of a French drain. It has nothing to do with water that comes down and wrapping it with fabric. It has nothing to do with that. French drains, perforated pipe surrounded by gravel, um, water rises up into your system. And I'll try to make you a video to show you what happens when you wrap your French drain gravel with fabric. And I have many types of fabrics that we use. You're going to be amazed. Um, all I can tell you is if you live up north, you definitely don't want to wrap your system with fabric. If you live in the south, yep, you need to wrap your system with fabric. <laughs> So we're digging pit number two and really tight headroom. <laughs> We've got to get down two feet and we're using just a little shovel. You might have seen a video I did before up in Jacksonville. Uh, same thing. And it is not an easy task because you only get out, you know, just a little bit of soil each time. But we'll get it. And if you're doing this yourself, I don't know, you can sing, you can, you can cuss, <laughs> which I hope you don't do. But, you know, when I'm digging stuff like this, I don't know if you're a, an old World War II buff, movie buff, but there's a movie called The Great Escape, and it's got Charles Bronson and... Um, Steve McQueen, lots of, lots of major British actors. And of course, they're POWs, you know, trapped in a camp. And they're, what they're going to do is they're going to dig a tunnel and try to get, you know, like two, three hundred men out and to escape to cause chaos for the Nazis, for the Germans. And I always think about Steve McQueen or I'm sorry, I always think about Charles Bronson. And he's the tunneler, and he actually is claustrophobic. But he's the best tunnel digger, you know, wherever he's been. He's been locked up in the prison camps for many times, you know, so many times. And he's the one that digs the tunnel. And it's just, it's really funny. I think about stuff, and probably you will too. Anyways, let's take a look at what we got going on here so you can see it. So we finally got the pump, pump back here. Now I'm gonna cut a riser from the bottom or the top of the check valve. I'm gonna bring it up here towards these joists 
and temporarily I'm going to send it out through the vent. Um, that's about as far as I'm going to get today. We've got a hundred percent chance of rain coming for the next few days. So we don't want this crawl space to flood. So we've got to get a pump down in here and that way we're able to come back and work even during the rain and this thing is going to keep it pumped out. But so I got to cut a, a riser and I'm just going to make a measurement using my saw and basically it's going to be two, two saws long. <laughs> I know, I know, but we need to get started with something, right? So we'll cut this off. You know, in addition to bringing back the pump, you also have to bring back your pipe, your saw, your drills, and your fittings, your glue, all these things. You know, I put all that in a box, but you still got to move it all back here. There's, there's no other way around it. So here we go. Let's just make the measurement, the dry fit. What I'm doing, and I'll show you in a second, is I'm just putting it down into the check valve. And somewhere around here, there it is, I've got this other box the pump box and it's got my handy dandy <laughs> black and deckers I always take two of them with me I know that camera goes out of focus it's because it's so dark but I always bring two black and deckers one has a permanently fixed 5 16 inch nut driver because it's always so full of sand I can't get it out of there but so basically you can see and I'm going to put a 90 on it right here and then we're just going to plumb it with an inch and a half, some fittings, and tie it all together. And just go right out to, temporarily, right out through the vent. And then when we come back, we'll use our hammer drill. We'll actually go that way um, and core the wall and bring it out. Because we're going to go down that side of the driveway. Um, a lot of work outside as well. But a great, great job for the do-it-yourselfer. <laughs> I just realized I've got so much... I just realized I have so much dirt on me <laughs> and, and you can't wipe it off because there's just so much dirt on you. But anyways, let's go ahead and um, tighten all this, these clamps up. Remember, they're held together with no hubs from the check valve. And then I need to get the extension cord back here. I thought I had brought it back, but I didn't. So I've got to crawl back out again and do that one more time. So you can see, you know, how it sets up. Remember that pit's two feet deep. We've got Remember I set it up outside to show you, but there's a small riser that comes up to the check valve. Check valve has arrows pointing upwards, tells you the direction of water flow. Then we've got a riser coming up, a 90, and then we're going to discharge. I'm just going to let it lay there for a second. We're going to let it discharge all the way over. You can see the light back there. We're going to go right out through that vent temporarily. That's the driveway side, and it should as the pump kicks on it should let that water run down the drive temporarily but we don't want to go that direction and trench through that driveway to get it out to the front much easier on this side although it's not that easy um, there is a vent over there but i'd rather go out on the driveway temporarily um, just because i know that that water won't come back down into the crawl space Hey, this is Chuck with Apple Drains reminding you that if you believe you can do something, I guarantee you can do it. It may not be easy, but you can do it.